It was in quite a contest as uh, Tennessee Tech, uh, well, I guess we call it the melee in Murfreesboro. Is the, you know, it's a shame that it. the, the fighting incident takes away from what this team has accomplished and what those the two programs have accomplished. Uh, Coming up, here's the, where it all started, the uh, melee in Murfreesboro on the pass into Milos Babic. We'll see it at regular speed one time, then at slow-mo. You can hear the crowd too, and, and uh, I'll tell you, this was, we are lucky that some, some people weren't really seriously hurt. We've talked to our team about trying to break up fights and trying to, that if you protect yourself, you're okay. If you protect your teammates, you're okay. Uh, but you, you shouldn't go past that. And, uh, and I'm not sure that, that, that a lot of players on both teams, I thought we had a couple of guys I wasn't real sure. But there's some people going around not trying to break up fights, just trying to see who they can hit and who they can hurt. And uh, I just, you know, it's a shame that this kind of stuff takes place in any sporting event. I know you were concerned, you, you, somebody had said that they thought you were asking your players to come off the bench, but we'll see in the replay, when you enter the floor, you turned around and waved them back, and amazingly, about four or five guys turned around and went back. Well, our first job was try to keep our guys on the bench, because the new NCAA rule says an automatic ejection. Of course, it starts here with Buck, number 20, pushing Milos. Milos thought Wallace pushed him. Now, Milos, at the same time, shouldn't have reacted here, and it should never have gotten to the point that there's the pushing by each other. Now, I think you can see our players are trying to stop the fight, and two of their players there are hitting. Now, watch the people coming to the right on Milos off the bench. No one's trying to break up a fight there. Uh, I thought Gerald Harris for them was the only guy. You can see him in there trying to separate people and trying to break up the fight. But, He's trying to separate, and the referee's mm -hmm. trying to hold on to him. But, but, but the other guys that come off the floor for middle were clearly trying to see who they hit. And you, you can see Mike Buck here in the middle of the lane. Now, every time we seem to get it stopped, here comes Mike Buck again, number 20. And Mike is a good kid from Clark Range. He just got caught up in this mentality of intimidation. See, the fight's effectively stopped right now. And then you see the shot to the back, and here we go back again. And then, of course, it's just uh, every time it gets stopped, this kind of stuff gets it started again, and you just got to, you can see one of our managers take a vicious blow up here. Now, he had, he had struck someone before, and, you know, we're just lucky someone wasn't seriously injured, even though we did lose John Best for three or four weeks to, with, a, with a wrist injury. On this, uh, on, in the during, fight? During the fight, John Best has a fractured wrist, and so he'll be out for, for at least four weeks, which probably effectively limits his contribution to this season. And as you say, it's, hard, it's really hard to try to point fingers and say it's this person's fault. There were obviously a couple of players who, who maybe should have been ejected that were not, but, uh, but it's hard to point fingers and say it's this one person's fault that the whole thing started. Well, we've tried to talk to our players, clearly. When a fight starts, don't respond, first of all. Don't respond to their intimidating you. Don't respond to anything else. And... Uh, but when you do, when two people do get in a fight, everyone else try to break it up. And, and I'm, you know, I've gone through this thing in slow motion so many times, frame by frame. And I can assure you, in the first half of the fight, every player we had, after Milos did the, the push in there, was trying to break the fight up. Now, late in the fight, after 40 seconds or so, we had two or three guys off our bench who, had, who we had held back for a minute mm -hmm. that came in and, and, and probably went past that. And, the officials and are... To be honest, right here, I'm not fussing at the officials. You know, that's when I had been accused of telling my players to go in and, and do damage to middles players. And, and I think, I don't think Booster means that. I think in the heat of the motion, he says whatever he says to, to get the best advantage for him. And, uh, and, and Charlie's telling me there, that, hey, I know you didn't say that, Coach. Don't worry about what we think about it. We know what kind of person you are. Of course, so you see Earl was visibly hurt. Earl, I really thought, was a victim in this. I thought he was trying to be a peacemaker. He got hit in the face. He got kicked in the face. When he did, he'd come up swinging. And I think a lot of us would have done that. And uh, Earl had really tried hard to break the fight up. And, and I think Milos tried, after he did the initial push, and tried to avoid much else. And, uh, but at the same time, you know, you get in these situations. I thought our players that stayed in the game responded. Of course, Bobby came in and hit some free throws. And, you know, to hit just... I guess he hit four out of seven in this situation. Four I know I was six. pretty, you know, I was pretty, I was pretty shook at this time with all the stuff that had gone on. And uh, I don't know how he did it. That's yeah. the young man from uh, is it Barberville, Barberville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Just an 
really kept his head about him. He will miss two of these free throws. The officials are Charlie Watkins, Robert Bell, and Bobby McGrath, and they actually went over to to where the coverage of the uh, game of the week was going on, which their this is our coverage right here. This is our one camera highlights that we were shooting from, from the side we always shoot on. Now, the OVC game of the week crew was on the other side shooting, so they didn't have as good of a look at the fight as we did. I saw the other video also, and, and, and uh, you know, I'd like to see what that, because I don't know what angle they saw on the monitor. It may be a different film, but I think two or three of Middles guys that were not ejected should have been, and I'm not sure that one of Middles and one of ours that were ejected should not. I'm not sure that Earl should have been ejected based on what I saw of it. Of course, I don't know the angle they saw, but again, you know, uh, of course, here's Mike shooting the free throw, which is really ironic because he was involved in most of it, and uh, you don't want to point fingers. Mike's been in our camp forever, and he, he tries to be a competitor, and sometimes that competitiveness gets too far, and I think it obviously did in this game. Speaking of the game, as we see, uh, they, they missed all four of theirs, which I thought was rather interesting, and one reason, I guess, why uh, you'll see right here. This so happens the tech crowd was right behind them. We had great fan support there, and they hollered at the game, and you know, one of the things that, that stood out with 10 minutes to go in the game, all you could hear was Tennessee Tech fans. Our fans just took over the building, took over the gym. and They started you know, leaving there. early. That was a little bit strange. Now, what are they telling the players? And I'm here? sure right here they're telling the players, look, if you want to continue this basketball game, we're not going to have any problems. And, you know, we also didn't show it here on the highlights, but we got, we got a little bit of a disadvantage in that they had the basketball first. And so the officials called two or three quick fouls before we could get off their end of the floor because mm -hmm. obviously they're going to get control of the game. Jerome Rogers really became a leader in that game when he didn't do that every game. You know, he was the most veteran player on the floor, and he took it upon himself to really try to raise his level of play, and I think he did that with his rebounding, his scoring inside. 17 points, 15 rebounds, 3 assists. I tell you, I think that everyone that played did so good. You know, everyone in there made so many big plays, from Jerome to Mitch to Joey Coe to, to Bobby. Uh, Van, of course, made some big three-pointers, and, you know, after the game was over, and, and I seriously thought this game lasted an eternity. And, <laughs> well, it was a nine-game losing streak against Middle, and, and you said that you felt, I read where you said this, you felt this game lasted longer than the losing streak. You know, I'll tell you, I didn't think that second half would get over because of all the things. You know, the second half was big because we came back out there. And we really got into our offense and executed. And we talked at halftime about, hey, let the offense do the, the scoring for you. And you can see we've really tried to use the three-pointer. And Bobby gives us that threat. And he, he was uh, three of five from three-point range. He ended up with 21 points in this game. Yeah, they ain't got a, a, a very close call there. And in fact, uh, you can see I was trying to, I'm not pointing at my waistline, even though I probably could, I'm trying to say you call block. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't have to point at my waistline. It's noticeable from a long distance. Wade made a big play. Remember that play, big rebound. And, you know, again, every guy that played in that second half made some big, big plays for us. Every time Middle would try to try to make a run at us, we'd make a play. Middle played several defenses, and we had some people playing in some spots we really hadn't practiced. But, you know, we just we took the lead and just gradually increased it. Good inside-out pass. We mm -hmm. keep up with those. Uh, you know, we keep up with post passes. And at the same time, we expect the post passers to, to pass it back outside. You know, Wade's got to be very confused. He, he played inside, outside. He played just about everywhere on the court. And he almost redshirted before this season yeah, started. Yeah, we talked about him redshirting so that he could gain some strength. But I felt like that, and he felt like that he could really contribute to this team. And, and maybe for his own personal benefit, it would have been better to redshirt him. But for the team's benefit, we've needed him. And, you know, and I kept looking at the scoreboard minute by minute, and we kept increasing the lead. And that was a big three-pointer by Wade. And you can see our players are into the game in the I mean, as, as a team, and that's what we've got to do. Rod Manuel comes in and makes some very good plays for us. Now, he hits a post pass and cuts and uh, comes up with, I don't know how he got that in the basket, but he made big, six big points for us. You know, Rod was our two guard last year, and he's had to give himself up some to, to enable to back up some people, but he's really done a good job lately. It was a big Playing well in inside. Night. Uh, uh, is it my imagination, or is he wearing a bigger uniform this year? Well, I think he's a little bit stronger. We've worked very hard on the weights, and uh, you see Gene and Eldon, the old standbys there. Yeah, that's after after the uh, fracas has calmed down a little bit. Heads up play by Mitch here. Very good play, and he'll get the basket, too. And great unselfish play by Wade. That's one of the things this team is doing, is playing unselfishly and becoming a very good passing team. 